Hello everybody, so this video may is gonna need some backstory. A few months back, I've been trying to do this video for a while, and every take I do is just garbage, so I gotta do another take after that. Robbie went to Best Buy, and he looked at a PC for around $1,700, and I don't, I don't know what OEM pre-built it was from, um, but he sent me a video. The CPU was the 14700F, the GPU was the 4070 Super, uh, I think 32 gigs of RAM, 1 terabyte SSD, and of course included windows and for seventeen hundred dollars for pre-built that's not bad at all but with the pre-builds remember just look make good warranty good customer service and just a good build in general so and he challenged me to see if i could do a bit better building a seventeen hundred dollar computer just a disclaimer though this build does not include windows if you wanted to include windows you're gonna have to cheap out on some components you can pirate windows as well which i don't recommend doing but also if you're spending seventeen hundred dollars and you want a windows license what's another hundred dollars to you this is not a build i'd go with yes you're gonna you're gonna get amazing uh, probably even 4k gaming performance at at ultra details but at 1700 dollars you're experiencing diminishing returns if you're gonna be playing games at 1440p and also if you're just wanting to play games to play games you don't really care what it looks like you just want to play the game I wouldn't go with the $1,700 system, I'd go more of a, maybe go with a $700 system. That's the disclaimer, this is just purely the build itself. If you want to get Windows license, you're going to have $1,600 budget, but still, you're going to get way better price to performance of a system. So CPU, I had around, a th I left myself around a $300 budget for the CPU. And you, as you can see, there's a bunch of options. Ryzen 5 7600X, which um, you can go with if you want a higher-end graphics card because these are $100 less. I ended up going with the 7700X. The 7700X versus the 7700 because, I mean, they're they're literally $7 apart, so you can save $7 going with this. And also, it includes a cooler, which is fine. I think it's the Wraith Prism RGB that comes with this. I'm pulling this from my butt. I didn't look at it. Which is a fine cooler. If, if you want to get a free cooler, you could save 30 bucks. Hey, that's a pirated Windows license right there. Um... And the 7700, you can over, you can just overclock it to a 7700X. As long as you don't get an A-series motherboard from AMD that, that doesn't support overclocking, you can literally just overclock a 7700 to a 7700X. And even if you don't, just gonna leave it stock performance. Maybe you're losing 3-5% to 5 in gaming, and at most, maybe the most demanding workload, maybe 9%. Um, which, it's $7, guys. I just went with the higher-end brethren. And if you want to overclock your system, I just go with the 7700X so you can get more overclocking headroom. And some other suggestions I'd go with. 13600K and 14600K and all the other KF SKUs and whatever, whatever. But if you guys do with, go with the Intel chip, and if, and you do want to overclock, remember, get a Z-series motherboard. And if you don't overclock, you can get you can get cheap out uh, with a B-series motherboard. Overclocking with a good CPU cooler. At most, you're probably going to see maybe a 5% performance increase. Overclocking isn't really that necessary anymore because stock performance they're really pushing those chips with the uh turbo boost behavior but if you really wanted to overclock i this build gives you the at least option to overclock but if you want if you're gonna go with intel's offering and you want to overclock go with the z series motherboard relative performance at 1080p at least according to tech power ups game suite um the 14600k is winning out the 7700x by 2.9%, you're not going to notice that, and remember, this is the average geomean of all of the tests combined. Uh, so, and if you're looking at one specific game you really want to play at 1080p, um, which is more CPU bound, um, you you may see a bigger increase with the 7700X or the 14600K, but 13600K is 2.7%. Improvement. So if you find a good 13600K used on eBay and it and it's cheaper than the 14600K, just go with that. Honestly, uh, 13600K versus 14600K pricing, yeah, they're around the same. You're spending 16 more dollars for 200 megahertz boost, and you get a 2.9% improvement. And then all all the rest of these chips are kind of meaningless. I'd I'd go my recommendations 7700x for today's pricing and these are new pricing 7700x 7700 13600k kf 14600k or kf but I for my build I'm going with the 7700x so we're trying to go comparison to comparison with the pre-built and so far the C the CPUs might 
the 14700F may win versus the 7700X in CPU dependent games, but most games today really take advantage of the graphics card, especially Cyberpunk and, you know, your ray tracing and stuff. Uh, simulation type games, though, such as Anno 1800, um, and others like that, you know, high, high FPS CS2, will really like more, you know, CPU. And it's, it's, and at that point, you're looking at either higher clock or more L3 cache, and it, it's a, it's a really big discussion that I do not have the time for today. So, 14700F, yes, may win most of the time compared to the same 700X, but I, you're, you're not gonna notice from day to day, okay? I'm, I'm if you really want to get the 14700F, you can, but at that point, uh, you're gonna go with lower end GPU, and you're not gonna get the same graphical demanding type game performance compared to this system but again if you're looking for cpu dependent games uh anno 1800 high fps cs2 stuff like that go with a you know 14700 f and maybe a 4070 super like in the pre-built cooler i don't even need to bring this cooler up you guys already knew what i was going with the thermal peerless assassin my favorite cpu cooler right now thermal right Trust me, you're you're top you're top of the game right now for price to performance. Your coolers are so amazing right now, at least. There could be a, another Chinese competitor coming extremely soon that undercuts the Thermal Right Peerless Assassin in price and, and performance. That could happen soon. I, this is a really good cooler, okay, guys. This cooler can probably handle up to 265 watts without thermal throttling. You're gonna have a higher fan speed, of course, but this is just an incredible cooler, okay? Go look at specific reviews if you want to see more about this, but this is an incredible cooler, and I'm, um, of course, including it. And it's $34 for the price to perform. It's incredible. Just a disclaimer for this motherboard section. I'm using TechSpot to, you know, find a fine AM5 motherboard, but TechSpot uh, with the Roundup is utilizing the 7950X at 200 watts. The 7700X that I did pick for this build would not be pulling 200 watts. The max power draw that the 7700X will draw is around 135 watts stock. If you turn PBO on or you overclock it, of course you, the power consumption could go up. Um, but uh, with these VRM thermals, you could see them somewhat lower. The best motherboard on this list is the Gigabyte B650 Aor Aorus Elite AX, which in our PC Bart Picker list, I did build. I did pick. I picked the B2 version, and this this motherboard is incredible. It has it all. 2.5 gig gigabit Ethernet, Wi-Fi 6, a, a heck ton of USB ports, including USB Type-C. And on the board itself, it looks like it has a lot of fan headers, it has an 8-pin and a 4-pin EPS, and this motherboard will be good until the AM5 socket is last gen, I'd say. But if you want to go a bit cheaper, you can get go with the B650 PG Lightning. The ATX version has 14 60 amp power stages, but if you go for, for the MATX version, because your case is can only fit an MATX motherboard, um, it'll just have 650 amp power stages, which is a lot lower power stage wise. But during the t time of filming, this motherboard is on sale for $150. So. And uh, IO-wise, you don't get any Wi-Fi, which is kind of sucky if you need Wi-Fi, but yet do still have 2.5 gigabit LAN. And my used-to-be go-to motherboard, the ASRock B650M HDV slash M.2. Uh, this was my favorite motherboard because it was around $125 before it went up in price, okay? This, ha this has eight, fa eight phases of B-Core, I believe, at 60 amps. But on Newegg, uh, I don't think this motherboard is being produced anymore. It is $233, which uh, for a B-series motherboard, not worth it at all. But yeah, again, motherboards are very subjective on you and dependent on you. You need to think what kind of features you need in a motherboard. I, I chose the Gigabyte Aorus Elite because it is way overkill for gaming. It has like 14 phases, which is again way overkill for gaming and way overkill for the 7700X. This this motherboard can be good for uh, upgrading the socket, just in case if you know Ryzen 9000 and then whatever is after that likes a lot more amperage. But this motherboard is way overkill for normal folks. Um, so I chose this motherboard because I don't know what you need. So I just put I just took everything that somebody may need, put it in a single motherboard, and there you go. Uh, if you don't want to spend $190 on a motherboard, neither do I, look into your own motherboard, okay? 
I I can't I can't tell you what you need in your motherboard. You have to figure that out. I'm sorry. So this is and if you just want me to tell you what to get, just get this. If you don't know what you what you want, you'll get everything at um an everything price of $190. And this is AMD's B series chipset, which means you can overclock and do everything else, but it has less features compared to the X alternative. And also motherboard sizes play a crucial role in PCs. If you want to go with a small form factor build, ITX or mini, I mini ATX is your best friend. If you want a bigger build and you need more expansion slots, generally ATX will offer the most expansive, expansive slots and just the most features in general compared to its my MATX and ITX cousins. There's also a bunch of other form factors of motherboards now a whole bunch ytx and also the chipset with marvel with the motherboards play a crucial role with the amd motherboards it's less so because only the a series motherboards do not support overclocking and you know some some niche features like that um if you don't want overclocking you can always cheap out and get an a series motherboard but i'd say the best bang for the buck especially if you're going to be overclocking and for the best bang for the buck power delivery i'd say are the b series motherboards you can overclock with them they have less features compared to their x series brethren but they're they're completely fine for at least for a casual you but yeah again you get what you want i can't tell you what you want you have to figure out what you want and the features you really need with this build so ram is an area that i yes do still need to learn about i can make some sort of suggestions though for amd systems especially i'd recommend a speed of at least 6,000 mega transfers per second but go to builds away he'll explain all of this um but my my picked timings at least the pc product picker i did not look into individual reviews of these ram six themselves but they should perform fine ish are 30 36 36 76 and if you don't know what you're looking for don't sweat it ram at least if you go with the recommended 6000 and some tighter timings you're completely fine you won't notice a, a difference your performance won't hitch if you buy a 5200 mega transfers per second kit your your performance won't hitch um ram doesn't add much to the equation it does add enough to be noticeable enough but don't don't sweat if, if you really don't want to look into ram just go with what buildzoid recommends or with whatever your techie person recommends but with, with these timings um we have a bunch of choices here obviously these kev bolt sticks i love these sticks i don't know why uh kev but you got to be careful because kev is more of a niche brand compared to your corsairs and team groups as you can clearly see but um just make sure that your motherboard will actually support these sticks uh with these sticks uh go with what you want all of these should perform within each other because these chips may be binned and remember you can manually time these dims as well what they're specced for i went with team groups t Cray expert 32 gig kit number one because most i mean other than kev bolt basically most cheapest uh ddr5 here maybe they're lower bin chips but, I mean, you're not going to notice the difference from day-to-day -day use. If your memory overclocker low, such as Buildzoid, you may want to look into RAM more and to get what you actually want, if you really want to mess with things. Uh, but just, I'm going with the cheapest one, and the IHS of these of this RAM will not conflict with our CPU cooler at all, such as these Z-axical higher dims might. And also, I don't really like RGB, subjective thing. So that is why I'm going with the Team Group T-Crate. But um, you can you can get any of these sticks realistically. But I'd say a minimum of 32 gigs now because 16 gigs of DDR5 versus 32 gigs. Yes, you can still have 16 gigs. 16 gigs of DDR5 is no longer price competitive. And for a few bucks, maybe $10, $15 more, you can get a 32 gig kit. So you might, you might as well go with the higher density kit of RAM. Yeah, if you guys have any suggestions for the, my RAM choice, put it down below. We have a budget of around $100 for it. Storage. All right, I had around one hundred and seventy dollars left. Dot Puppers wanted to say hi. He he him big. Look at this big boy. He likes to run, bark, and be bad, and eat a bunch of stuff. Huh? He's your good boy. So the nine eighty Pro two terabyte is the SSD I chose. Um, comparison from the uh, pre built they showed me again. I don't know the exact SI pre built model number or who built it, but the you get one terabyte of storage in in that system. The nine eighty Pro, uh, not an SSD nerd. I'm not looking at specific things of the 90 of the SSDs. Um, just know that the 980 Pro reliable PCIe 4x4, so you can get all ultra fast transfers. And most gamers are not going to fully utilize the whole bandwidth. Um, 
because direct storage many developers still do not implement direct storage so i see difference there and a big and a big thing for me with this drive it has a dram cache um which yes you can get drives without dram cache that supports the system memory as their caching layer so that's why i bought the 980 pro and 170 dollars so if you want to go with a different drive entirely you can your budget is 170 dollars our price range for the graphics card at least for the budget that i left us the budget that I left us for the graphics card was around $700, and for this price, you can get 4070 Supers, but I, for, for the price, yes, you're going to get higher, re, higher ray trace performance compared to the 7900 XT, not to mention the 8 gigs of frame buffer advantage, but 12 gigs should be completely fine for at least today. We're going to have to up that budget a bit if we want any 4070 Ti's. Cheapest 4070 Ti, not even the... 4070 Ti supermodel. The cheapest 4070 Ti is $740. So you're spending a whole $40 more to get, um, you know, a around the same rasterized performance, I'd say, and way better ray tracing performance. You, you can go with it, but you're losing out on 8 gigs of frame buffer, and um, depending what you're doing, if you're video editing, you're going to need that frame buffer. Um, but also, if you're video editing, why don't you just use CUDA on the 4070 Ti? not just OpenCL on the 7900 XT. It really depends what your priorities are when choosing a graphics card, but AMD, at least right now, compared to NVIDIA, really, really strong performer uh, if you're looking at rasterized performance and gaming at that. But with, with this, I chose the 7900 XT. So at least at rasterized performance, and this is the 15 game geo mean um, of Tom's hardware. But we see that the 4070 Ti is basically the same as the 7900 XT. You get one more, two more FPS. Sorry, 1.4 more FPS compared to the 7900 XT going with the 4070 Ti. The 4070 Super isn't that behind the 7900 XT. So 4070 Super is actually, um, at least Tom's Hardware um, Geo Mean with their test suite. Uh, 3 FPS behind it. The 4070 Super I thought was a lot slower in rasterized performance compared to the 7900 XT, but I didn't look at the specific review. This is 1440p, or th this is 4K Ultra, so, you know, quite GPU dependent, and their CPU is not going to hold their back in any simulation type tasks. Is around 2 FPS slower. Th 3 FPS slower. Um, with similar 1% lows to match. Uh, so, you're not going to notice a difference between any of these graphics cards. So, it may be, so if you want to save some money, and you're not going to notice the difference at all, and you're going to be video editing and, um, and ray tracing, I would go with the 4070 Super, uh, because it really quite matches the 7900 XT, and isn't all that slower compared to the 4070 Ti. Now, this is what their test suite, and this is the Geo mean. In, in a specific game, you could see a massive difference between the 7900 XT, 4070 Super, and the 4070 Ti. I'm not even going to look at ray tracing because NVIDIA is going to beat the snot out of AMD with this. 7900 XT's biggest advantage is that his 8 more gigs of VRAM compared to the 4070 Ti and the 4070 Super. Uh, that could matter for future games, but 12 gigs should be fine today. So if you want to save some money while going for this exact same system, I'd go with the 4070 Super. Or you could go used. Thir 3080 isn't really doing that bad back here. Okay, so we chose our die of the 7900 XT, at least for me. I We chose the specific die itself, but we gotta figure out partner card we should choose. In between all of this, we have the Azrog Phantom Gaming OC, Sapphire Pulse, or the XFX Speedster Merc 310. For the Merc 310, I couldn't find the, the 70, 7900 XT model. This is the higher end model, the 7900 XT X, but this, is, this isn't comparable because there could be... Uh, VRM pads that aren't populated, uh, capacitor pads that aren't populated on the XT model. So we can take a quick look at the PCB. It has a BIOS switch, which is good, but there's no circuit board analysis of the 7900 XT, so we can't, this isn't apples to apples comparison. Phantom Gaming OC and the Sapphire Pulse uh, utilize the same exact phase configuration and MOSFETs. Uh, 14 phases for both respectively and the monolithic mp87997 dr moss and they're rated for 70 70 amp amps of current each for both respectively even the memory design is the exact same three three phase by the power systems mp2856 controller um and the same exact mosfets 70 amps of current the only difference i could see is the gddr6 memory 
Pulse model. The GDDR6 memory chips are carried by Hynix. And of the model number H56G42AS8 DX-014. At least for the specific card that Tech Power Up received. It's possible that the model number changes d depending how the patches go. Phantom Gaming OC. Uh, this, the GDR6 memory chips are cr created are manufactured by Samsung. For this specific model, batches could change, but they carry the model number K4ZAF325BC-SC20s. I like the Ezrock Gaming OC better because one reason is the BIOS switch, and you never know when a BIOS will become corrupt. Um, and I would like the Merc better if I actually knew what it was. Um, it's completely possible that the um that the Merc utilizes the same exact PCB layout as its 7900 XTX Merc. You can look at the PCB further. I will you I, you can freeze frame here. Just to, just for you guys to look. Um, I'm not I'm not going through this though because I'm still learning about this stuff. And I cannot tell you which one is better. Uh, but there are those capacitors and the capacitors up on the back. And the Merc, it's not really a fair comparison because, again, I don't know if the if there's a singular pad that isn't populated. Um, so, difference between the white and the black model is just the color. Your choice here. I'm going with the black model, though, because it's $10 cheaper and black just looks more sleek for me. With, but with the graphics card, if you're just really, if you're just merely playing games, I wouldn't look into any of the partner cards way too much at all. Um, just go with, I'd say, the cheapest partner card, because as long as the, the die's there, and, because for gaming, for just purely gaming, and if that's all you want to do, just look for the specific die itself. If you want a, if you want a more powerful graphics card, go with the, restart. But if you're just merely gaming with the graphics card, I'd get the cheapest partner card you can. Because if you're not gonna lose, if you're not gonna use overclocking features, um, with the better face face configurations of higher end of the same die graphics card, but higher end at that, so you know higher face count, better VRM. There's no point in spending hundreds of dollars more if you're just gaming. So get the cheapest partner card you can. I'd say. RM850E2023 model. With the budget left for the power supply, it left around $120. So you can look here um, upon what you want. I will I will post this in the description below. So if you want to, you know, look at this list and then build upon it. Um, number one, please uh, tell me in, your, in the comments what your list is. I'd love to see your list. And, you know, you can maybe choose, may, maybe there's a really, maybe there's a little niche power supply that you guys want to tell me that's a lot better than all of these. But just remember, never look into the companies, always look into, the, into their specific products. Um, because you never know if Seasonic, for example, uh, will release a really, really high quality 300 watt power supply. But then they will do a revision that really cheaps out on everything and it is a terrible power supply and it blows up. So, yes. And also, leadership changes in companies all the time, so you can never always trust companies. Remember, they're all, they're here to profit off of you, not be your best friend. But I chose the Corsair RM850E because it was, it was a good enough power supply, and it should be, it should be enough power to run this system. Uh, case. Case is completely subjective. I, I'm not gonna really look at the case, though, because I left around $111. For the case itself, but I chose the NZXT H6 Flow number one because I love these fish tank style PC cases. They're yeah, they're massive, but they're so beautiful. I love them. But you can go with a more traditional case or a cheaper case. I uh, just make sure that the dimensions of your of your GPU and CPU cooler will actually fit inside of your case. You don't want to get a small form factor case and get an RTX 4090 that has five slots, for example. But also, you can go used cases. Or you could just go open air test bench. The choice is yours. That's the greatness of PC building. You get to choose whatever the heck you want. But I chose the H6 Flow because subjectively, again, I love fish tank PC PC cases. Um, if you want more features with the with the case, if you want all you if you want a bunch of fans to be included, um, again, look in the specific case yourself. But I chose the H6 Flow because it's beautiful. And also, there's a black model. I'm getting the black model. Final price, all of the components together minus shipping and tax brings the total up to $1,660 at the type of filming.
that is forty dollars less than the than the pre build that Robbie sent me from Best Buy, and I I would say that this is a good build. Remember, this build does not include Windows, so you either spend another hundred dollars from Windows, you already have a Windows license, or pirate Windows, or you just don't have Windows. All you lose out if you don't use Windows is just the personalization features. And I'd say that's quite worth it. You do get a watermark in the bottom right of the screen, but I barely notice mine. If any of you guys would like to customize this build, uh, link in the description. And I would love to see your customizations down in the comments below, yes. That rounds it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Love you guys. Good night. Goodbye.